Hi everybody, Marty Geiger from your AI class here again, and I'm going to talk to you about Minimax here. So now, part of the jump that confuses a lot of people is from the game space itself to um, to the actual graph that's shown in the book. So it's really kind of hard to give you uh, a brief context, but I'll try because. The situation in Minimax is assuming that there's different um, different values at each goal node, which is not really the case for a lot of games. Something like tic-tac-toe or chess, you either win or you lose. There isn't a, if you win this way, you get 40 points. If you win this way, you get 20 points. So that being the case, let's ignore that and say that there is. So if we have tic-tac-toe, we're going to call this mega tic-tac-toe. And we're in a position here, let's say this position, uh, something like right there. And there are a couple different ways this board can go. X and O can still uh, win depending on what happens and who's stupid and who's not. Um, and let's assume that there are brilliant ways to win and bad ways to win. So that uh, there are some solutions, for example, where X wins and gets a value of 3 and Y wins. And when O wins, it gets a value of, of, say, 12, depending on how badly they crush the other opponent. So we can suspend disbelief there. What we have here is a situation that's probably uh, just a couple moves from the end. And now if we abstract that to this board, and I've taken this right out of uh, the book, and figure 5.3. I'm sorry, 5.2 in your textbook in Chapter 5 so that we can take these numbers and run this example exactly. And you can refer back to the textbook while I'm doing this. So we're abstracting tic-tac-toe. We're just blanket making the, the jump and assuming that you can have different end state board numbers. So if you're following me that far, then the rest is easy to explain, I hope. So what we have here is a situation where A, uh, sorry, max, I'm going to call this guy. Maybe we should call it X and O. So this is X's move here. And this is O's move at this level. And then at this level, the game's over, so nobody makes a move. It would be X's move, but it doesn't matter because the game's over and the points are awarded. Now, you can see the complete board state. Remember, this is talking about non-stochastic games. So this is fully observable game states like chess, uh, like tic-tac-toe, um, where you can see everything going on. Otherwise, you can't run this algorithm. You have to go further into the chapter for heuristic evaluation uh, and some of the other methods. So what happens here now is um, we can see everything that happens. We, so we can say if we make a certain move to here, then O is going to make it. If he's behaving optimally, we'll make this other certain move. And we can do that for a couple different instances. So we can actually go in one of one, two, three, four, five different spaces here. So again, this isn't a complete board. This is only three spaces. And then once we do that, O can go in one of four different spaces. And then once that happens, X will then go in one of those uh, spaces that, I'm sorry, there's just two moves from the end. So once that happens, O, the game is over at that point, according to this graph. Anyway, so following along here, so this is X's move, and we're going to predict what, what happens now. So if we go to this state B, then O gets to make a move. And if O makes a move, then the game can be over in several different ways. The game will be over no matter what happens. But either O will get, or I'm sorry, this is relative to X. Either X will get three points for this win or loss, or whatever we're calling it, uh, or 12 or 8, depending on which min, move min makes, which move O makes here. Call that O's move again. So if O goes to this state, then the game will be over, and X gets three points this state 12, and this state 8. So it's in O's best interest to minimize the number of points that X uh, gets. So if we move to this state, O is going to want to pick 3, because that's his best move. That makes him either lose by the least amount, or maybe 3 is a win for him, depending on how you count it. So what happens here is O is going to pick 3. He's going to pick this one here. And therefore, the value at this node will become 3 in the minimax algorithm. And this one, similarly, his best move is 2, because 2 gives the minimum value, and therefore hurts x the most, which is what he's trying to do. So that's why 2 goes there. Now on the far corner here, we have 14, 5, and 2. And once again, men will pick 2. 
and your homework asks you what happens when this changes the scenario a little bit. Um, and I'm going to leave that to you guys. I just want to explain the basic algorithm. Now, once we have this level, you kind of propagate the values up. So you have to know all the end states and their values in order to run this algorithm. That is crucial. So you have to have some evaluation of the board function. The board goes through an evaluation, and you get a three, some kind of C code function, for example. And then here, once you do that, then you can propagate up. Well, and then we'll pick three if you behave optimally, and two here, so two there. Now, x, or max in this case, he's going to pick the best of these moves that min is going to make. Therefore, he would pick three because three is bigger than two, and he can't do any better than that. So that's why his best move is three. And now this whole board up to this point now is evaluated at three. Because if everybody behaves optimally, then what's going to happen is the end of the game will occur right here at this node because an optimal move play X will always pick this one move and O will always pick this move because O's already evaluated the other ones. Uh, I'm sorry, Max uh, X has already evaluated the other ones and realized that if he picked any of the other ones he's going to end up with a worse state. So he'll pick this one and then given those three options of course O and Min is going to pick three because your other point values do not help him at all. And that's how this works. Min Max just propagates these values up and then you simply take the path that gives you either the max, if you're max, or min, if you're the min. The homework asks you to flip this around and give the other, other uh, side of the story. So you can understand that you know, in a two-player game, anybody can be max and min, and it's really relative here. So this is a little confusing. I hope this helps you sort this out a little bit. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about alpha beta pruning. And that's where it gets complicated, but also fun. and helps you reduce the state. So the basic problem here now is this doesn't reduce any of the states. So you still have to know every single board state to the end. So if you're playing something like chess with a huge branching factor, um, then you go all the way down the end states and you'll never get there because the algorithm will not be able to get past you know, a minor depth amount, 10 or 20. You won't be able to see the end game states. So you won't actually be able to do this. So alpha beta pruning helps you figure out how you can cut and chop some of these board pieces off so you don't even have to look at these states and therefore you can save computational time and look further down the tree in a direction that, it, that behooves you.